Today on Cruise Man's Garage, I'm going to show you how to install this new Zumo XT onto a 2018 plus Honda Goldwing Tour. The Garmin Zumo XT kit comes with a variety of RAM ball mount accessories for mounting the GPS. Now, if you have a 2001 to 2017 Goldwing, you can use this clutch brake reservoir mount to mount to either the left or the right handlebar. You can also use this if you want to mount it to the right side handlebar of a 2018 plus Honda Goldwing. If you have another motorcycle with round handlebars, you can use the round handlebar mount shown here. Now there's also a power connector that we're going to run from the GPS down to the battery. And then over here you see the cradle that the GPS actually fits into plus some other mounting hardware. I'm installing my Garmin XT on the left handlebar. Now I'm using a little bit different mount than what comes in the kit. This is the mount that I'm using and I will put a link in the description of this video where you can order this on Amazon. However, you can only mount this to the left handlebar if you don't have the Honda CB switch installed. If you do have the Honda CB switch, you will have to come up with another method of mounting, perhaps to the right side of the handlebar. The trim ring is held in place with a single screw. I like to give it a firm tap with a hammer and a Phillips screwdriver, and then the screw usually comes out pretty easily. Once you remove this screw, this trim ring just kind of comes apart, and what you're left with is a nice round handlebar that you can mount to. Of course, you want to store this trim ring somewhere. Don't throw it away. You may want to reinstall this later. Here you can see the round bar that we're going to be mounting to, and I'm going to be using this RAM mount. There's the part number, and I'll put a link for Amazon in the description. To get the RAM mount to fit, you may need to file off just a tiny bit of this mounting pin. Here you can see the RAM mount installed in that area. I filed off just the tiniest amount of that pin to get that to fit in place. Okay, the first thing we need to do is we need to attach the power cable to this base. And the power cable, this is the end we're going to attach. You need to pull off the little rubber cover here and just let it hang off to the end for now. And then, if you notice the side that has the little deep wells, just hold that up like this, and this cable is going to kind of go in to this opening. It will fit and then just kind of push it through and then pop it back into place like that so that it's flat. And then you'll notice on the back side there's a little bitty hole right here. And we're going to use one of these tiny, tiny little Phillips screws to hold this cable into this, uh, this mount. And to do that, we're going to use the provided uh, Phillips screwdriver. Garmin does give you this little Phillips screwdriver that's the proper size. I'll show you up close. This is the screw we're putting in right here. So it won't, you know, accidentally walk out. And that's what it should look like when you're finished. Okay, now we're ready to mount our RAM ball mount to the back of this cradle. And it will mount like this, basically, so you still have your two contacts here showing. 
And the way we're going to do this, first we have to put some little sleeves, these little black uh, collars. You'll see some little rubber washers here, and those just slip down inside there. And we're just going to put one of those in each corner. Pretty simple, really. And you can kind of press them into place like that. Now, this is going to fit just like this on top of those collars. And when you screw it down, it'll hold everything in place. Now we're going to take one of our screws and we're going to put a washer, if I can get it up, up there, like that. And then, it's pretty simple, it just goes in here, like this, and all the way through. So, the screw and the washer go in that little well, and the nut will go on the back of the screw where the ram ball is, like that. And I'm going to put all four of these in. We'll tighten it down and we'll show you what it looks like. Now I didn't have a wrench small enough to hold that nut, so I'm just going to use these pliers and then use my screwdriver to tighten these down. And I want these pretty tight. And this is what it looks like when it's completely installed. Now I'm going to show you how I ran the wires from the handlebars or the GPS down to uh, the battery area. I'm using a Showchrome isolator fuse block. Uh, if you have a different kind of motorcycle, you're basically going to run these wires under your seat or wherever your battery is located. You're simply going to hook up the red, uh, the red wire to a switched circuit and then you'll connect the black to a ground. But uh, you can find more information on that in the um, Garmin documentation. I removed this plastic trim piece uh, that's on the back side of the handlebars because a lot of wires and cables go down through that to the uh, electrical system. And it's very easy to remove. It's simply uh, two four millimeter screws. Now you need to be careful with the forwardmost screw because you can easily scratch your paint with a hex key. So just take your time and make sure you uh, are aware of that. Now I chose to also move my center panel switch out of the way and then I removed the steering head cover. The steering head cover is held in place with two Phillips screws. It's very easy to remove. Now I used a shortcut method to move the center panel switch out of the way. Normally you have to remove the top shelter and a lot of other plastic parts to get to that center panel switch. But I have a shortcut method and I show how to do that on my 2018 plus Honda Goldwing maintenance videos. Now the reason I removed these two parts is so that I can run my GPS wires underneath that steering head cover so they're kind of out of the way. It just makes for a cleaner installation. And then I'm going to fish those wires down under that top shelter so that they come out underneath the seat and I can connect up to my isolator fuse block. Now if you don't have an isolator fuse block, I'll show you another way to wire it up. So you can see here how this uh, wire coming off, this is my mount here, and this wire, I want it to go underneath this ram extension here. And so I'm gonna push it all the way over to one side so I can get it to fit. And then I can adjust this later where I want it because I want this wire to be able to come around here and go down into uh, this area, this uh, next to the handlebar where we took off the uh, cover. And that way it'll run right next to those wires. Now, because I have not removed the top shelter, there's no way I can fish all of this down to the battery area because of this little, whatever this is, 
transformer or not sure what it is. But this little box, there's no way it's going to fit through the tight space that I fished my wire or my wire fish through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bundle this all up and tuck it up underneath the steering head. I did this the last time. And then when it comes time to change my air filter, remove my top shelter, then I can reroute all this and pull it down toward the battery. Of course, you have the option of doing that up front. I'm just choosing to, I'm going to bundle all this up. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a red and black wire up from the battery and connect to here. Okay, here you can see this other, these other wires that come from our hand controls, this bundle of wires here. And I'm just going to tuck this one from the GPS right in underneath that. There's just enough room for all that to tuck in there enough so that I can put that plastic cover uh, trim piece back over. And this wire goes up to our, our uh, cradle. I want to show you how I ran my wire fish, which I'm using a 36 inch cable tie to do this. You can see here I've gone down uh, under the handlebars through that opening uh, into the top shelter and it comes out down here uh, kind of behind the gas or next to the gas tank. Now the cable tie works well for me because it's flexible enough and small enough to get into tight spaces. And I will tell you that probably the most time consuming part of this entire installation was getting this wire fish down through the proper area. It just takes a little patience. Uh, you just have to keep poking it back and forth until you get it to come out where you need it. Now I added about 36 inches of wire to the end of the red and the black wires coming from the GPS. Now here I'm using these heat shrink butt connectors to connect those two wires. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because the wires that come with the GPS aren't going to be long enough to get down to the battery area uh, because of that little box. I'll put a link in the description of the video where you can order these heat shrink butt connectors. They're really great. I use them all the time. Now I have uh, taped my end of my wires to my wire fish and it's just a matter of now I'm starting to pull everything through. You want to go carefully because you don't want to accidentally pull that tape off of the or pull the wires off of the fish. But you just kind of work it from the top and the back and uh, eventually the wires will come out through the area and once you have the wires underneath the seat as you can see here they're coming through now. Uh, then it's just a matter of getting everything hooked up. Here you can see I've connected the wires coming from the GPS to one of the 12 volt keyed power terminals on the isolator fuse block. And of course you have to remove the cover to get to those terminals, which you'll see in the next picture I left the cover off. Now, after you get the wires wired up, you can then use the cable ties to secure those wires to this frame rail. I didn't get a picture of that. Now, if you don't have an isolator fuse block, you can always wire your GPS up to the accessory terminals on your Goldwing fuse box. Now it's just a matter of putting the bike all back together, making sure you adjust your GPS to the position you want it, and lock it down, and you're done. And don't forget to watch for my upcoming thorough review of the Zumo XT. If you enjoyed this video, please take a second to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to click the subscribe button down below. And if you click the little bell icon, YouTube will notify you when we come out with new videos. Thanks again for joining us on Cruise Man's Garage.